Right, let's do this. We are currently having a heat wave here in Denmark, which I keep talking about. And I know some people say that this heat wave of ours is not that much of a heat wave compared to their countries, which I totally agree with. The thing is that here in Denmark, we are not used to days of 32 degrees Celsius. That's just ridiculous. And today it's been 35 degrees Celsius. So I am basically spending my days in my bed in the shadow and then the evenings I can actually film and be a human being. Also, we keep having these constant fears here in Denmark of fires starting on the fields or in the woods. Just alone today, three or four times I've heard fire alarms and fire trucks moving out which is not a very comforting thing to happen so it's just too hot it's it's too dry and i am not feeling myself these days but these videos need to be done anyway they need to go up because i'm so close to the end and i really enjoy filming as long as it's in the night when it's not way too hot i think right now it's about 7 30 p.m and it's only 31 degrees Celsius, so whew, that's a lot in the evening, I think. Anyway, I'm not here to discuss the weather, even though I could talk and talk about that for hours. I'm here to talk about something that is much more revealing about myself, and that is my book buying habits, because I'm going to do the book buying tag. I think it's a fun tag to do because it's a way to share with you how I buy my books and how many I buy. But it's also a way to be honest with myself and think a little bit about how I actually buy my books and how much money I actually spend on them. Let's do this. I have the questions in front of me and the very first question is where do you buy your books from? So that's an easy question. That's a nice way to start. I primarily buy my books online and I use either the bookdepository.com or a Danish site called saxo.com which also has English books but it's a little bit more expensive to use that site so it depends on the prices and the books I want to get. I will say that the book depository is very slow in its delivery of the books so it can be up to two weeks before i actually receive them whereas saxo is about a week i sometimes use amazon as well but it's very rarely that i do that it's only when i really need a book or need it really want the book that i can't get elsewhere or that is the cheapest on amazon number two do you ever pre-order books and if so do you do this in store or online it happens occasionally that i pre-order a book but i only do that if i see that the book is just about to come out i don't like pre-ordering half a year early because then i will forget all about that pre-order and Maybe buy the book again once it comes out, which is not something I want to do. If I pre-order books, I do it online always. I don't use my Danish bookstores very much for that. I don't think they have the same access to English books as I can get online. Maybe that's wrong, but that's the way I like to do it. I like to find the books myself and make sure it's the actual book that I want and that it's the edition that I want. Question number three is, on average, how many books do you buy a month? Now, that was one of the hard questions, but I've, th I've been thinking a little bit about it and I think on average, I mean, this month, which is July, my summer break, I have bought over 30 books, maybe more like 40 books, and that's not an average at all. A pretty good average would be 10 books a month, which is a lot, and I really don't think that's necessary. But the thing is, does it also count ebooks? Because I think sometimes it's okay to buy ebooks because they are not filling up space on your shelves and you can just read them and have them on this Kindle without having too many books in your apartment. I think on average I buy 10 books a month, including my Kindle books, but it might, it might be a little bit higher, that number, it's hard to say. But I think that's a pretty accurate number. Question number four is, do you use your local library? Not nearly enough. I mean, I use it occasionally whenever the spirit comes over me and I want to 
go to the library to have a relaxing trip and just scan their shelves and then it happens that I borrow some books but I rarely end up reading those books for some reason I don't know what it is I just think that the pressure of knowing that I have to return them in a month makes me not read them for some reason it's not always been successful for me to go to the library but I like the idea and I would like to become better at using it because it's a great way to get access to all the books in the world without having to pay for them and own them afterwards and having to move with them. Question number five is if so how many books can you or do you borrow at a time? I think that the times I've been to the library I have borrowed about four or five books which also differs a little bit from trip to trip. Sometimes it's just been one book if it's a book that's been waiting for me that I have put on hold. Other times it's four or five books because I scan the shelves and I find something I would like to borrow. So I guess that's the closest I can get to a number. Question number six is what is your opinion on library books? My opinion is very positive. I think it's a great way to ensure that everyone has access to books whether you are poor or rich, whether you just want to borrow a book for the summer without having to buy it and own it. I think it's a great way to ensure that and as I said I would like to use it more myself but being a book holder and a book lover makes you want to own those books and have them on your shelves once you finish them. That's at least how I feel. Question number seven is how do you feel about charity shop secondhand books? I like them. I mean, I don't often go to charity shops or secondhand bookstores because we don't have a lot of those here in Denmark which have English books. And I do prefer reading English books. I also like the feeling of having a brand new book which I can read and hopefully love and cherish and have on my shelves for years and years. So I don't use them very much, but I do like the idea of them. And the books that I have found in secondhand bookstores have been true gems that I couldn't find elsewhere. So that was a really good treat once I found those. Question number eight is, do you keep your red and TBR pile together on the same shelf or not? I keep them together on the same shelf. There is no division between my red books and my unread books. I tried doing that for a while, but I don't know. I just like the feeling of having all of my books scattered and sorted according to height so that it looks good on my shelves. That's just the way I like to do it. Time for a sip. Cheers. Uh. Mm. Okay. Ready for the next one? Question number nine is, do you plan to read all of the books that you own? I mean, yeah. Whenever I buy a book, I have a very clear plan to actually read it. But you know how it is when you have a lot of books on your shelves that need to be read? You sometimes lose interest in the books and you unhaul them after a few years. Which I think is okay because you change as a person and your reading tastes change as well. So while I do have the intention of reading all of my unread books, it's not always the case and I'm fine with that because even though it seems silly to spend money on a book you're never, never going to read, you have the intention of reading it once you buy it, but then things might change after that. Question number 10. What do you do with books that you own that you feel you will never read or felt you did not enjoy? I unhaul them. I give all of my books that I didn't really like to charity or to friends and that also goes for the books that I haven't read yet but that I have lost interest in. I think that's a good way to do it. Make sure that the books get a new home and make sure that someone else will actually read them and love them hopefully. Question number 11 is have you ever donated books? I do donate books to charity and as I said also to friends and family if they stumble across a book I'm not interested in anymore they are free to take it and read it. Have you ever been on a book buying ban? Hmm it's not something I do a lot. I think I might have been on one over the years but it wasn't taken that seriously by me. It was more of a ban that I did subconsciously, thinking that I had bought enough books now, I didn't need any more. 
but then a week goes by and you buy another book and then that ban is over so i mean as long as i'm happy and as long as i feel that the books i buy bring me joy and the books i own also bring me joy then that's fine with me so no book ban is necessary at least for the moment and the very last question is do you feel that you buy too many books another hard question i mean we are all book lovers we are all book hoarders i think hmm i don't know i don't think i buy too many books but i do buy a lot of more books than the average person i realize that but it's my hobby and it's my joy to buy and read books so i don't see anything wrong with that as long as i don't go bankrupt i think it's okay to spend money on books and try and restrain myself a little bit to not buy all the books in the world which i could very well do but i'm not going to do that i also have my kindle which i'm trying to use more but nevertheless i'm rambling now I don't think I buy too many books. I buy a lot of books, but not too many, not yet. So that is actually it for this tag video. I hope you enjoyed hearing about my book buying habits. Thank you for watching and until my next video, happy reading.